Well, hi there. This is a hedgehog. And at the end of our video on rats, our current best scoring mammal, I said that hedgehogs might give them a run for their money. And that is because hedgehogs, for mammals, are very reasonable pets. And a lot of the reason for that is because they are, as pets, basically reptiles. And reptiles are, in general, and after you learn the basics of reptile care, considerably easier pets than most mammals. Cats are kind of an exception because, well, a strong case can be made that they aren't the pet in the relationship. But mammals are generally a lot of work. They require a lot from their keepers, often every day. But in many cases, they make up for that added commitment by being very rewarding. I have a dog. He is way more effort than any of my reptiles. But he also gives more back. He can accompany me on hikes and bike rides. He sleeps in my room and helps protect our home. And he adores my family in ways that really nothing else can. In some ways, he feels like a person in a dog suit. The only difference being that he is happy to see me every day, always. And he's more attuned to all of my emotions than any human. Well, all of my emotions except annoyance. He has absolutely no ability to detect annoyance. So mammals are generally much more demanding than reptiles. But in many cases, they give more in return than reptiles. And hedgehogs are mammals, technically. But are they actually less demanding than other mammals? I mean, if they're so much like reptiles to keep. And are they more rewarding than most reptiles, since they are, in reality, mammals? Well, I think we're going to have to find out. And thankfully, our friends Kimberly and Nathan Halzen of Hedgehog Precision have come to visit us with their long-eared and four-toed hedgehogs, as well as this creature, which isn't a hedgehog at all. And they've come all the way from Nebraska to help us answer these questions. And in order to do that, we're going to have to give the hedgehog, well, actual hedgehogs, a score based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. Okay, I wanted to start off by saying that if you've ever seen a hedgehog before, it's probably this one. The four-toed or African pygmy hedgehog, or potentially a hybrid between the four-toed and North African hedgehog. But there are actually something like 17 different species of hedgehogs distributed all over Africa, Asia, and Europe. This hedgehog, the long-eared hedgehog, comes from Central Asia and the Middle East. And you might notice that it's about the same size as the African pygmy hedgehog, even though it isn't called a pygmy but it is the smallest hedgehog in that region. Hedgehogs are somewhat closely related to true moles and true shrews. I specify true in there because if you've seen our videos about Afrotherians and marsupials, you know that shrew, mole, and even hedgehog are popular forms for convergence. But the closest relatives of hedgehogs are these, the moon rats. But these spines are pretty diagnostic and you shouldn't confuse a hedgehog with anything else unless you're in Madagascar. If you guys have been following this channel for a while, you probably know that I love the Ridge Wallet. And I have one right now that I've been carrying for the last several months and I love it. But then they came out with a whole bunch of new ones that are really rad. And with Father's Day coming up, looks like I gotta pick a new one. So we got the High Dive Blue. It also comes in it with a key case. And this is kind of really similar to what I've been using lately. This is the carbon fiber High Dive Blues. I actually really like the Carbon Fiber Ridge Wallets. But then it gets better because I've seen a lot of people who have their wallets magnetically attached to their phones and Ridge, who makes the best wallets in the world, has the MagSafe option now for their wallets. Not only do they have a number of wallets that come with the MagSafe option, but on top of that, you can modify any existing Ridge wallet into a MagSafe wallet with the MagSafe plate. They've got full cases for iPhones, but since I don't have an iPhone, they've got this MagSafe tray, and man, does it stick on strong, and I love the way that the wallet clicks right on there, and it's not going anywhere unless you want it to. I might have to go for this MagSafe carbon fiber. That might be the perfect Father's Day gift for me, and if you're looking for a Father's Day gift for your dad, or 
if you're just looking to get yourself a little present. Ridge is having their biggest sale of the year. From May 15th through June 15th, you can get up to 40% off on some of your favorite Ridge products. Whether it's a wallet, key case, or even a new phone case for your iPhone, there's something for everyone. So you can go to ridge.com slash Clint, or just click the link down in the description and save up to 40% today. And thank you, Ridge, for sponsoring today's video. When it comes to handleability, um, well, they look like porcupines. But I have some good news. They aren't porcupines. And their spines, while sharp, aren't as sharp as those of porcupines. They aren't barbed like those of porcupines. And they don't come off like those of porcupines. In the Amazon, I had the cutest prehensile-tailed porcupine walk up to me. It wanted to crawl up my leg. It had absolutely no fear of me. But I wasn't tempted to handle it. Hedgehogs are better to handle than porcupines, which probably doesn't tell you everything you want to know about how handleable they are. So, how much better than porcupines are they? Uh, well, a lot. Not only are their spines not nearly as nasty, their bite is also not anywhere close to as scary. These aren't rodents, and subsequently, they aren't armed with a nail gun in their mouths. And they're pretty reluctant to bite. Their claws, though sharp, are not large and are unlikely to do much damage. And they can't drop their tails. Always a bonus. And though their backs are covered in quill-like spines, their bellies are not. They have very soft, though sometimes quite disgusting, undersides. We'll talk more about that later. What I'm saying is that if a hedgehog wants to be handled, or at least doesn't mind, then it can be done without injury. But they aren't very social little beasties. Not only are they fairly grumpy, they're grumpy and nocturnal. So if you want to interact with them during the day, well, it's like trying to handle your grumpy neighbor who you just awakened in the middle of the night and who has spikes all over his back. It's likely to roll into a ball, exposing none of the soft parts, and make grumpy, grumpy noises. However, if you've put in the time to develop a trusting relationship with your hedgehog, and if you're respectful about the time of day that you handle it, it can be a completely, or at least quite different story. And we'll have Kimberly and Nathan talk to us about how to build this bond here in a minute. After that, the biggest issues are just gonna be their um, disgusting undersights, the fact that they like to do their business while on the move, and the fact that you might have an adverse reaction to the spines, which they anoint with a potentially irritating mixture of saliva and substances they encounter in the world around them. Hedgehogs aren't gonna be like dogs or even rats to handle, but, it can be done. And if you put in the work, handling a hedgehog is it's fine. And we give them a score of two out of five. If you want a soft, cuddly pet, get a super dwarf reticulated python. <laughs> and if you think I'm joking, come to Clint's Reptile Room and hold one. They're amazing. I just want to mention that every week our patrons on Patreon get access to the video well, a little bit early. And this creature, if you already knew that this was the best pet mammal for you, it's actually fairly easy to get, but sometimes when our videos come out, animals that were easy to get become very difficult to get. And our patrons on Patreon are gonna know if this is the right pet for them, well, before everyone else. And so if you wanna be part of the club or just support the things that we do here on Clint's Reptiles, please consider supporting us on Patreon. When it comes to care, we give hedgehogs a score of three out of five and because I personally don't keep hedgehogs, and because we are so blessed to have Nathan and Kimberly here today, uh, I, we're gonna learn a little bit about caring for hedgehogs. So, uh, would you guys introduce yourselves a little bit? Absolutely. Uh, I'm Kimberly. I'm Nathan. Uh, we have been working with hedgehogs for like more than 12 years, but 12 years of involvement in education, rescue, breeding, and working on improving hedgehog husbandry. So we're especially excited that you had us out. Well, thank you so much for being here because you guys didn't come a short distance. They came all the way from Omaha, Nebraska, and they not only brought themselves, but an awful lot of awesome animals. And so would you talk us through a whole lot of things about care? Maybe starting with just, how do you pick a hedgehog? Uh, oh boy, picking a hedgehog. <laughs> Sometimes one will just fall, in, fall into your lap as a rescue and you get what you get. 
Um, if you are going through a breeder, good breeders will give you the opportunity to meet hedgehogs and pick one that's a good fit for you. Some of them are very friendly and some of them are not very friendly at all. And the individual personality makes a massive difference in the experience you have owning a hedgehog. This boy here is old. He's four and he's super chill. And so you wouldn't really come across a hedgehog like this unless it was a rescue because he's toward the end of his life. But there are adults that you can get that are super friendly. Don't discount rescues. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to get babies, but there are so many adults that need homes. Talk to me about housing for a hedgehog. Yeah, so we generally recommend at the very least four square feet, but it's great if you can get closer to a six square foot horizontal space. Mm -hmm. They not great climbers. They're not great climbers. Nope. They've got these these derpy little feet. <laughs> Tiny toes, little paws. <laughs> I know they're these goofy little feet. So a flat surface, as much room as you can give them because they do run a lot. So you'll obviously provide them a wheel, but just the space in the cage to have their wheel and their hiding spot, their food and water dishes, some enrichment. If you go for something small, that space fills up very fast. Mm -hmm. Like common mm -hmm. options are storage tubs that you could get at Walmart mm -hmm. or Target. You can use guinea pig cages as long as they don't have shelves that they can fall off of. They will Stuff fall like off that. the shelves. Perfect. A budget, the best budget option would be large tubs because they're easy to clean, easy to heat, and they're affordable for most people. Mm -hmm. What is it like? feeding a hedgehog. That can vary greatly. <laughs> so we actually developed an insect-based hedgehog food because the vast majority of people will feed cat food, or if they're not feeding our food or another hedgehog food, most people are feeding cat food to their hedgehogs. And cat food is developed for much larger obligate carnivores, not tiny little insect eating creatures. And so we have a whole bunch of health issues that hedgehogs can run into eating cat food long-term. Uh, hedgehogs are very prone to a variety of dental issues. And so a smaller food that puts less premature wear on their teeth mm -hmm. makes an enormous difference. He's four years old and his teeth look great. He's been on mm -hmm. our food his whole life. He looks very tired. <laughs> He's had a long day. It's been a long day. Yeah, my goodness. But most hedgehogs, if they're on cat food and they make it to four, their teeth, they're missing teeth, they have teeth that are ground down a lot, it's more common for them to get oral cancer. So the, the kibble size is actually huge. That's not even related to the like formulation of the mm -hmm. diet. Mm -hmm. Hedgehogs do much better on a higher fiber diet than cat food is. You will have to clean your wheel less if their poops are actually solid, which I highly recommend. We put a lot of effort into assessing the palatability before following through and manufacturing the food because hedgehogs can be pretty picky about what they'll eat. They like to eat what they ate as babies. And so if you have a bunch of hedgehogs who grew up on cat food and you try to feed them something different, if they don't eat it, you're not getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. So we really had to work on making sure that hedgehogs would eat our food, not just that it was good for them. That's very cool. And how do they get it? Uh, so they can order directly from us online. At Hedgehog Precision? Yep. Uh, we have an online store for our staple diets as well as uh, different insects and stuff that we sell. Very cool. In addition to their staple diet, it is great if you can offer a variety of insects, whether they are live or dried, uh, just as dietary diversity. And it does help boost their overall fiber intake, which is great for them and it is great for their fecal consistency as well. They can be pretty fatty and it is bugs. Hedgies too, but the bugs. <laughs> <laughs> if they're eating um, too many bugs. Yes. Uh, insects can be pretty fatty and a lot of them are calcium deficient. So you just have to keep in mind that you're not feeding a ton of just bugs. They do still need a balanced staple diet, but adding in insects is fantastic. So that's the bulk of what they would be eating in the wild. Food and water dishes, they can drink from water bottles, but you'll have to make sure that they know how to do that. Yep. They're not always able to just come across it and learn, oh yes, that's where my water comes yeah, from. Obviously it comes out of that metal tube. <laughs> yep, it's, it's not as natural for them as little noses to the ground creatures mm, compared to um, like rodents, for example. So yeah, little like two, three inch ceramic dishes, glass dishes work perfectly. And they do seem to drink a bit more when they're offered a bowl as well. Okay. Um, so I, I have a few kind of very hedgehog specific things. So one of them is you need to keep hedgehogs 
warm. This is one hmm. of their very reptile-like attributes. Exactly. They, they have to have a heated enclosure. Uh, and, and a lot of people are very concerned about them going into hibernation or what I would call torpor. I can't find any good evidence that suggests that they are true hibernators. Um, but they definitely go into torpor and, and potentially for long periods. And some people are very, very concerned about that. So can you talk just about like, how do you heat them? How warm? And, and kind of what are your thoughts about torpor and the risks of torpor? Absolutely. So they do need to stay warm. We generally recommend 72 to 74, 76. Is That's Fahrenheit. In Fahrenheit, yeah. yes. <laughs> Celsius would be a bad oh, time. Oh, yeah, and if it's in Kelvins. <laughs> <laughs> um, normally, so you want that rather than with like a basking spot or a hot end and a cool end, you actually just want the whole enclosure to be warm. So the entire ambient space in like the mid 70s, most people will either heat the entire room to make it easy so you're not trying to heat one specific area or if they're not comfortable doing that they'll use a ceramic heat emitter or a deep heat projector because you do need to be able to heat day and night yep. exactly and so you deal. can't just have a heat lamp that's on it during the day because then mm -hmm. it goes off at night um, a lot of the concerns around hibernation are people will notice like my hedgehog is hibernating so or attempting hibernation I've, i picked them up and they're cold they're not responding uh, if I can feel their belly, their belly feels cool. Um, usually the recommendations immediately are like, get the temperatures up, which you can warm them up gradually with your body heat or in an appropriately warmed enclosure. I think the distinction between torpor and hibernation, normally what we see in hedgehogs is torpor. Uh, they are reducing their body temperature and their metabolism for a brief period of time. Normally that is triggered by a drop in temperature or a change in their diet. If they're, if they go off their food, they can pretty quickly say, oh, I need to reserve my energy. So they will go into torpor. Mm -hmm. And normally they bounce back from it very quickly once they're warmed up and they're eating fine. Um, in the wild, four-toed hedgehogs do go into torpor. There is a cool season where food is just not as available and they will still wake up each day and go out and look for food, but there will be dips in their metabolism mm. and that's totally normal. It would scare headling owners mm -hmm. to death to have to acknowledge that like, oh, my hedgehog cooling off for a little bit is actually a natural thing that they do that's okay. The biggest risk comes when they do that without any fat reserves for a long period of time, mm -hmm. or if they are obese and then they go into torpor and they are processing a lot of that fat, they can go through ketosis or fatty liver disease. Mm -hmm. And that's a very hard on their liver and a, not a fun way to go. Hedgehogs do something which makes a heck of a lot of sense in the wild which is they don't like to poop where they are. They like to poop while they're on the move, going somewhere else, which is brilliant because hedgehogs themselves have almost no odor. And so the only thing about them that has odor would be their urine and feces. And yep. so get that out of the way in a place that you're not gonna be. Exactly. And that works just great. When you have all the space in the world to cover. But not when most of the time when you're on the move, you're on a wheel. And so this leads to some horrifying complications. <laughs> and yeah. I'd love it if you'd talk to us about those and how to keep your hedgehog clean. Excellent. Oh, and also how to pick a wheel. Because I'm sure not just any old wheel is going to do. Right. So they do poop on their wheels um, every night. And they will step on the poop as they run. So when you come back in the morning, they will have a messy wheel that you will likely need to clean. Some of them are better at being tidy than others. So we have many hedgehogs that you don't have to clean their wheel every day. You can get away doing it like every two or three days. But there are some that need it every day. And that is as gross as it sounds. You need a sink or a bathtub that you don't mind putting a poopy wheel in. Most wheels are made with ball bearings, so you can't get those wet. So you need to be careful mm -hmm. as you clean it. But after you've done it for a little bit, it's not that bad. It really isn't. I do it every day and I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, there's a poopy wheel to clean yep. probably every single day. Now you mentioned they step in it. Yep. And sometimes that can, this, so, so the wheel is poopy and needs to be clean. Indeed. What else is poopy and needs <laughs> to be clean? Their feet can be poopy. Um, again, not, some of them are better where they poop and you might not have a hedgie with bad feet, but some of them do get little poop boots that you need to 
clean off. Again, maybe not every day, but it wouldn't hurt to just plan on giving them a foot bath every day or every other day. And that's usually with water, correct? Yeah, so we'll fill a sink or a bin with like an inch of warmish water, let them stomp around in it for a bit. And it really does just have to be just, just warm water, just to rinse them off. As far as keeping their feet clean, keeping their nails trimmed helps a lot. Mm. Longer nails will provide more surface area for poop to gather on. So keeping their feet tidy will make it easier to just do routine little foot baths, warm water, let them walk around a little bit. We use and highly recommend fleece liners. Mm -hmm. They are very easy to wash and keep clean. They're cost effective for people because they last virtually forever. It gives you a chance to observe their eliminations because they don't live that long and oftentimes your first indications that something might be wrong are changes in their output. Um, <laughs> however, liners are not always the best at helping keep their feet clean when they're running on their mm -hmm. wheels. Yeah, we'll be getting there here in a second. Which we'll get to yeah. and uh, that can be helped if you have liners with a litter box okay. around their wheel to help keep their feet clean. How hard is it to get them to use the litter box? Not too bad. If you put it where they would naturally go to the bathroom, yep. easy. If you put it somewhere that they wouldn't normally go to the bathroom, they're like... They tend to eliminate while on the move. Yes, yes they do. So... Put it under the wheel and behind mm, the wheel. Because the wheel is where they're on the move. And so it's... Yep. Exactly. They're not doing it in the litter box. They're doing it on the wheel and it is being flung into the litter box. Is that correct? That... Typically, yeah. Okay. But they also like to go behind their wheels. So it's like oh. a little secure pooping place. I been there. <laughs> <laughs> got, got a little spot by the treadmill. <laughs> You're like, oh god. <laughs> they need a secure place to sleep. If you don't provide one that they find adequate, they will make one. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times they will be sleeping under their wheel or under their liner because yep. they want to feel cozy and secure. So if you can, something that kind of gives them some of that weighted blanket security, a little small cozy sleeping spot. For a lot of ours, we'll use an igloo with like a blanket or a hedgy bag inside of it. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. This is this is a big one. So if you want a hedgehog that acts like this one, <laughs> how do you make this happen? Oh goodness. Uh, well, Kiss here is a baby that we produced that we held back. Uh, he is exceptionally friendly because he is deaf. So he, I can't really take credit for that. <laughs> But socializing them lots while they're young and more importantly than just socializing them, positive socialization. It's very easy to say, I held my hedgehog for 30 minutes, like that counts as socialization. But if they were stressed out that entire mm -hmm. time, you could honestly be making it worse. Yep. So even just very short little bits of interaction, cumulatively that way, they learn to associate us weird humans as an opportunity to explore provider of food and fun things rather than just something that is pestering them while they're trying to sleep and <laughs> <laughs> and I oh, sorry we have to interrupt your fun and trying to touch them because he doesn't care but most hedgehogs you touch them like this and that is scary and that's why they huff and then people are like oh my gosh I'm so sorry I'm trying to be nice to you and you hate it and you hate me mm. and it's terrible and it's really just that a lot of the natural petting behaviors that we think of as comforting they don't find comforting mm -hmm. so it's a lot of giving them what they want and not what we think they want where did his bag go over here can I have it just because yeah. he's a squirm so quilling is essentially just a juvenile stage where they shed out of their baby quills into their adult quills and hedgehogs will actually keep their adult quills their entire life. They generally will only lose them again if there's like a big hormonal or health event that occurs. Will they regrow them if they lose them? They will, yes. Okay. Usually as adults, if they're losing quills, you should go to the vet and get that worked up because there's a reason that they're losing quills. Mm -hmm. But it's mostly for babies at this very inconvenient time that they go through their juvenile quilling right when people like to bring them home. And, and so then it looks like they're falling to pieces. Right they're when they falling to pieces and they're grumpy. They go through a fear period right around that same time. Mm -hmm. And so it is very tough those first couple weeks for people when they bring home babies that are like eight, nine weeks old because they're huffy and shy. Everything's new. They've got stress poop. They're growing in new quills and it's just a rough go. Yeah, I remember when I lost my quills. <laughs> <laughs> so much stress <laughs> poop. <laughs> So anointing is something that hedgehogs will do when they come across intense olfactory smells. So 
It could be a new food. It could be a sweaty human armpit. There's all sorts of weird things that they'll come across, like carpets especially. They love to annoy with carpets because there's always weird, gross smells in carpets. They'll find a new smell. They'll start licking and chewing and tugging and biting and working up a bunch of foamy saliva. And then with their surprisingly long tongs, they will turn around and spit that on their quills. And like so, you do. Like you do. And this can be a little startling though to people who don't know that's coming. Yes, yeah. it looks sort of like they're having a seizure mm -hmm. or maybe that they have rabies. Yes. But really they are just collecting this awesome new smell that they found to carry around with them, whether yep. it's just for fun, whether it's they think that it's going to help them deter a predator in the future. Let's talk about hedgehog they're, alone time. Yeah, you're talking about filthy underbellies. Mm -hmm. In addition to running on their wheels and tromping through their poop and getting nice little dirty feet, uh, male That's hedgehogs... That's not the only dirty thing they do, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... <laughs> Make of it what you will, but sometimes they like to spend some time alone mm -hmm. uh, with themselves mm -hmm. in private. Oh. But sometimes it's not in private, if I'm honest. Like sometimes <laughs> they'll just be walking along the couch and a male hedgehog will be like, you know what, this is kind of a nice texture, you know? And they'll get a little bit frisky. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a thing that happens and it's not really that big of a deal. But some people really don't like the fact that occasionally there will be a bit of residue left on the underside of their hedgehog as a result of said enjoyment of life. I appreciate extremely how you said that. That is <laughs> the best. Now, most of the hedgehogs that people have ever seen are four-toed hedgehogs like these. Yep. But you guys do have a second species. We do. Would you talk to me a little bit about the differences between the species? We would love to introduce you to Cap because he is an absolute gem. So this <laughs> is a long-eared hedgehog. They are not very common because they're relatively new to the pet trade in the United States, but they are so stinking cute that people could not resist <laughs> finding a way to import them into the States. And they are pretty much same in care to four-toed hedgehogs just amp everything up like eight notches. <laughs> he is moving at a slow pace right now, but generally they do everything faster and more intense and more involved. And they have better spatial awareness. So they interact with their environment a bit differently than four-toed mm -hmm. hedgehogs. And <laughs> they cover more ground at night. So they're more active. They eat a bit more, even though weight wise, they're about the same as our four-toed hedgehogs. Uh, they have a few adaptations that you might be able to see that make them a bit more adapted to desert living. They've definitely got much bigger ears. Mm -hmm. They've got big ears <laughs> and these big old clown feet. There you go. You get to uh, see the Roomba move. And they right. seem to stand up a little taller and yep. survey the, the landscape they do. a little better. We didn't talk about this with the four-toed hedgehogs, but it would be very abnormal for a four-toed hedgehog to be up on top of their hide. Mm. Um, for these guys, it is very normal for them to jump up on their hide and like survey their enclosure. It's really right. interesting. You can tell how good their hearing is because every You're time there's it. like a hard consonant sound. Yeah. Like the, the K's and the S's yeah. really get them. Um, um, I also didn't talk about this much with the four-toed hedgehogs, but they run a lot, like on average three to four miles a night. Um, these guys are about double that on average. So lots of running. And so investing in a quiet wheel. A yes. quiet wheel, a durable wheel. It's easy to just go buy a wheel and then it breaks within a month or two and then you end up spending way more money buying new ones. Uh, this is just preference, but because you will need to clean it, considering how you're going to clean it, a lot of larger wheels have ridges on them, mm. which mm. is a nice crevice for poop to get stuck in that's harder to get out. So something that's smoother might be better. And then like with preference testing, it seems like they prefer a larger diameter rather than a smaller diameter. Okay. We like to recommend at least 12 inch diameter wheels. Realistically larger than that would be great, but then it gets a bit prohibitive for most people in terms of the floor space that that takes up. Mm -hmm. well, let's, let's take a moment to talk about hardiness. So when it comes to hardiness, we give hedgehogs a score of three out of five. As far as lifespan goes, four-toed hedgehogs are normally only about three to five years, which is certainly better than a rat, but... But not a lot. But it's not mm -hmm. a lot. Long-eared hedgehogs are 
closer to like seven years on mm -hmm. average, if not more. It'll be interesting to see over the coming generations how long they tend to live as pets. Both species will get cancer, but four-toed hedgehogs especially, like by three or four, like you're doing pretty good if they haven't had cancer pop up already, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. And I've heard um, a lot of times if you get it removed, they recover pretty nicely. They can, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you are able to find a good vet that can do a small animal surgery, but also there are loads of cancers that they're difficult to diagnose. And a lot of vet clinics aren't really set up for the diagnostics for such mm -hmm. a small animal. And I never want an owner to feel bad if they choose to euthanize their hedgehog rather than go through a lot of expensive diagnostics and treatment. Because it that can be thousands and thousands of dollars. It can be really expensive. And honestly, you might not get a lot out of it. No, like Probably another year tops. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so I always like, we always want people to have a great vet and to provide good vet care. But sometimes good vet care just means keeping them comfortable until the time comes. Common diseases, honestly, if you're providing good care for your hedgehog, you're pretty smooth sailing the first couple years at least. Mm -hmm. Issues will largely come down to improper husbandry. Um, as they get older, it's really common for them to either have tumors that you can't see or organ failure that you can't see. You just notice like, oh, they're declining, they're losing weight, they're not running as much. They are little prey animals that hide things really well. And so your indication something's wrong may literally just be they've lost weight. And if you don't weigh them and know that they've lost weight, it's just kind of a surprise. Mm -hmm. You wake up one day and you're like, oh no, my hedgehog is dead. Yeah. <laughs> that, that sounded horrible. I shouldn't <laughs> say it like that. Well, it's true. <laughs> Obesity is super common, especially because uh, hedgehogs really love fatty things. And especially if you're feeding a high fat cat food or you are just feeding them anytime they look hungry, it is very easy for them to become obese and that will reduce their mobility and impact their overall health. Overall, I think that's a, a pretty good rundown. What do you Thank think, you guys eh? so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us out and letting us show off some of our hedgies. They've been delightful or not, but they were not supposed to be. When it comes to availability, we give hedgehogs a score of four out of five. Here in Utah and many other places, hedgehogs are available at pet shops and expos with considerable consistency. If you want a hedgehog today, you can get one today. Though that isn't how I would get one. But they're a clear five. That said, in some states and other places, they're illegal to keep. And since these laws are somewhat common, I just can't give them a five for availability. But here, you can get them just about anywhere that sells pets, as long as you aren't too picky about which species they are or that they're not hybrids. But as I said, this isn't how I would get one. And it isn't. And not just because I would prefer pure species bloodlines, though I would, but I would prefer to get a young, well-socialized hedgehog over a grumpy adult. Positive interactions with animals are really important to me. Hedgehogs often grow up to be your grumpy neighbor. But grumpy old men, at one point, were probably fairly friendly kids. And if you get one as a kid and have consistently positive interactions as he grows into a man, well, it's a lot less likely that he will turn out to be a grumpy old man. And just to be clear, I, I'm talking about getting a hedgehog and I'm not encouraging ki kidnapping. Human children get the lowest score we have ever given on this channel. And I was very clear in that video that kidnapping is not the best way to get one. I clearly recommended that you either breed them yourself or get one from a rescue. And the same is true for hedgehogs. Either get one from a breeder, like Hedgehog Precision, or rescue one. There are definitely hedgehogs that need to be rescued, though many will be grumpy old men, so keep that in mind. And I will tell you that I don't see them in need of rehoming on nearly the same scale as animals like sugar gliders and chinchillas. And if I had to guess why that is the case, it's probably because, well, first off, hedgehogs don't live quite as long. And maybe more importantly, because hedgehogs don't demand nearly the level of attention that many other mammals do. Mammals are a lifestyle and hedgehogs are, well, they're just not quite as intense. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the hedgehog a score of three out of five. Hedgehogs themselves are fairly expensive, uh, especially considering that they don't live that long. Per year of life, 
it's probably difficult to find a more expensive animal. But they can cost from the low to mid three figures for just a hedgehog. However, since they are totally non-social to antisocial, you definitely don't need to get more than one. The enclosure that you need won't be extremely expensive for a mammal enclosure, but more space will be appreciated. So they will need bowls, toys, wheels, and other things like this. And remember that you will need to heat the enclosure. But overall, this isn't the most expensive pet you can get, uh, not by a long shot. But it certainly isn't cheap. And do start putting away a few hundred dollars for vet bills down the road. And this is why overall we give the hedgehog a score of 3.0 out of 5. In a lot of ways, hedgehogs are very reasonable for mammals. But they are also not the cuddliest of mammals. I'm really not surprised at all that they didn't manage to dethrone the rat. But they are super cool. In many ways, they're like reptiles that are technically mammals. They lack most of the downsides of mammals, but also most of the upsides of mammals over reptiles. But if what you want is a cute, small-eyed, spiky mammal, then the hedgehog might be the best pet mammal for you. Unless it's this one instead. And this is the one that I would get. So we'll have a video about these guys here in the next couple months. So click the little bell so you don't miss that. And as always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Thought you were grabbing me with your face, not your little hands. Will acts like he's not even hungry. Thanks, but... <laughs> <laughs> Will's never gone himself. That's... Never gone myself? <laughs> yep. Yeah. He's, not a, he's not a pooper. No. Yeah. He goes into the bathroom, reads a book, runs the bidet, <laughs> never <laughs> flushes, then he's... He does a dry run with the bidet, huh? Dry run with the bidet. Because that way he doesn't have to see what happened. That's right. He just, he just... You know me too. Well. Yep, sometimes he goes in there and he leaves feeling better than when he went in. <laughs> and uh, it's best not to ask too many questions about how he got that way. You're the worst example yeah. ever, Kiss. You are too sweet. He's still sleeping. Sweet. He'll get there. I don't I don't know if he will. I think he might just still be sleeping. Male hedgehogs especially are capable of producing a noticeable amount of semen because sometimes they like to um I don't even, I'm going to have to think through, hold on a second. How, how am I supposed to word this on a family friendly channel? We're pretty straightforward. <laughs> Clint. Yes. Ridge sent a special gift to you. Oh snap. Well, I picked my wallet. Oh, go Chiefs.